Guys, let's get started here. Um, again, I'll just do a quick intro again. Uh, my name is Ryan McGovern. Um, this is Design Chat number 13. We're here live video streaming from Samata Mason in West Dundee, Illinois. And we have special guests, Red Square Agency, Rich Sullivan and Andy Keel. Uh, Rich Sullivan is the Executive Creative Director there at Red Square Agency in Mobile, Alabama. A and Andy Keel is designer extraordinaire. Say hi, guys. What's up? Hey. How are you guys doing tonight? We're doing well. Thanks, yeah. thanks for having us, man. No problem, no problem. Did I miss anything in the intro there? No, no. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm Rick Sullivan, and this is Andy. And Hi, I'm Andy. We're at Red Square Agency, so no, it's, it's a highly accurate intro. Awesome, awesome, cool. Good start. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Flawless, really. Yeah. And I, I believe our screen name for this uh, lovely chat is going to be Kern, because I did it, because I'm a dork. He's a, he's a, he's a type freak. You know, actually, if you want to, you, you could change that so it doesn't uh, confuse anybody. If you just type, uh, um, oh, no, I've forgotten it. It's, ba it's backslash, uh, anybody know Tiny Chat really well? Screen name. Ah, uh, oh, forget it. You're Kern. You're yeah, Kern. Kern. Yeah, That's yeah. fine. Um, all right, well, let's get started here. Uh, so you guys in Mobile, Alabama, and uh, how long have you guys both been with the group there? Well, um, I have been with the agency for um, about 10 years, and mm -hmm. uh, my father started the agency actually the day I was born, so um, it's kind of an interesting side story and, and, and um, a very cool kind of anecdote, but um, he missed my birth because um, he was uh, starting the agency. Um, uh, it's a long, long story, but um, my mother swears he missed my birth, so <laughs> let, let the record show. Um, Anyway, uh, I came to work uh, 10 years ago. We were called Sullivan St. Clair, uh -huh. and uh, we've been Red Square for about uh, 18 months, 20 months at this point, and um, I started running the agency five years ago. Um, my background was account service, and I wound up uh, kind of migrating into the creative side of stuff, and uh, because our, our creative was very, um, it was very okay. It wasn't, um, it wasn't killer by any stretch. Um, so I started uh, kind of breaking um, breaking the rules and writing my own copy, um, and just kind of found my way to the creative side of stuff. We ended up uh, the agency sh uh, shrank a good bit, and then uh, we I was given the ability to basically build it back from from the ground up. And uh, and that happened about 18 months ago. How did you guys choose the name Red Square Agency? Well, um, that's a good question. Um, the agency uh, was called Sullivan St. Clair, and the logo uh, was a red square uh, with Sullivan St. Clair reversed out, and uh, just scrapped the names and left the square. Um, it, it literally means nothing. Um, we like the irony, though. Uh, obviously, an ad agency uh, called Red Square is is different, and um, and that's that's kind of part of the appeal. Uh, the the thing that I'm very attracted to in advertising and design is is kind of a, um, a snarky type of intelligence, um, just where you kind of, you're doing everything with, um, with a bit of a reverence, and, and that's kind of uh, what the name is about. And Andy, how long have you, have you been with Red Square? I started about March. Um, I was actually working up near you in Madison, and got laid off uh, about October. Job hunt, job hunt, job hunt. Uh, the CD Matt found me, and through uh, where I went to school, to portfolio school, I went to the Creative Circus. Um, so all the circus grads out there, hey. Um, and you know, I came here in about March and started working. Cool. Um, just a little note for the people just entering the chat here. Uh, we've got Red Square Agency with us. We've got Rich Sullivan and Andy Keel. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of discussion just about design and community in general. Um, and near the end, we're going to open it up for Q&A with the, uh, the chat room. Um, so get your questions ready. If you've got think of something that you want to ask these guys. Um, all right, so let's move on here. Um, going through my notes. Um, all right, so... Uh, Talk about your clients. How do you guys choose your clients? Do your clients choose you? Do you go after specific types of business? Rich, you were saying you just you just sort of reformatted how the business was run not too long ago. Yeah. Um, I mean, how does that fit into what you're doing? Well, our thoughts were 
uh, when we, and, and I've been running the agency for about five years at this point, and we've, we've been very, very lucky in this environment uh, in that we have, uh, we've enjoyed about 35% growth uh, annually for the past four or five years, which is, which has been, um, it's been interesting because we've been in a constant state of, of flux uh, and continued growth, which we are very lucky um, in this environment, not every certainly say that. Um, the, 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 what, how I kind of got um, very passionate about advertising design, uh, public relations, interactive, everything that we do, um, I just started studying um, the great agencies. Um, I didn't go to school for any of this. Um, and so, you know, as far as the design uh, capability, it's, it's guys like this. <laughs> um, I, I'm a writer. Um, and, 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 you know, I guess anybody can write. but. Um, but I, I fell in love with um, with some of the writing from you know stuff like the early DDB stuff, um, the Volkswagen stuff, just the kind of a an advertising that gave um, the consumer credit for having an intelligence, and um, and that's the kind of stuff I wanted to do was just really smart stuff that people uh, advertising. Adver most people don't like advertising. Uh, design design people, um, you know, that's kind of a different thing. People like pretty stuff. Um, and, and I think I'm oversimplifying it, obviously, but but with advertising, it's interruptive, and people don't um, typically like it. And so, if we're going to interrupt their their programming, their television, uh, you know, their their magazine or whatever, um, a website, um, it had better be rewarding. Um, that that's just my thought. And um, so we started doing that kind of work, and um, it attracted. We started very small, and, and we would basically do uh, do work for just about anybody, just to get some good work under our belts. And once we started doing that, we, we used that to promote the agency. I mean, an, an agency is only as good as its latest work. And so we used that, and it just kind of snowballed, and we got um, kind of a um, a bit of a reputation for doing interesting work, and um, and that has you know attracted a certain kind of client and. Um, and the name change and, and the, the migration from kind of uh, shelled in this conservative kind of uh, 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 branding, which was Sullivan St. Clair, and being from Alabama, um, that all of that was a big challenge. So we wanted to do something that immediately stood out and that gave us the ability to, um, to have a, a, a potential client look at us and know immediately whether they wanted to hire us or not. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the whole you can't be for everybody kind of thinking. And once right. you once you have the guts to do that, it's it's liberating because um, well, a you're not going to waste a whole lot of time on on clients that that aren't going to appreciate what you do, and b um, you know you're going to open yourself up to a whole host of, of great clients out there that do want that kind of work. You know, it's just kind of a a, a weeding out process. And um, so how we pick clients, uh, we pick clients who will who will let us do awesome <laughs> work. Yes. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, beggars are not choosers. I just want to do great work for great clients. Really nice people would be nice, too. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a, I don't like working for assholes. And, 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 and our clients are all nice people. Um, we've been very lucky with that, too. I mean, it, and, and it's, if it's, again, they know what they're getting into at our agency. We do, um, we do interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and it's not for the faint of heart, some of it. Um, you know, um, some clients like the idea of doing, um, and the word edgy is just as cliche as it gets, but, um, but, but work that does uh, attract press. Clients like the idea of that, but once you actually, sometimes once you actually do that, it scares the day like that of them. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of finding the right, right chemistry. You know, with the way that technology changes so fast, it seems like it's, it's directly affecting the way the agency world is working in advertising and design and all the things that we do. Um, how have you guys adapted? Um, because now there are so many different opportunities um, to, to get an advertisement to a consumer, to a person who's supposed to hear it. Um, what different avenues have you guys taken? I mean, you guys obviously have a, a really strong um, online presence for yourself um, through social media and just your, your site. Um, so what, what areas are you guys focusing on in that? Uh... Um, I lost that last bit of audio. Um, uh, well, I mean, what we're doing um, is anything that we can, anything we can get away with. <laughs> you know, it's kind of the broad answer. 
But um, I, I mean, it just depends on the client. It depends on the category. It depends on where the consumers are. But our our thinking, and if you go to our website, um, there's a, a section called House Rules, and it's basically it. We basically say anything that that uh, that we can get away with, uh, we'll do. And um, right now, with the emergence of social media and everything that you can do online, and, and how that's kind of becoming um, absolutely uh, mainstream, um, clients that you wouldn't expect, like hospitals, we've got a couple of hospital clients, and, and they, they tend to be conservative. We've, we've managed to do some really creative stuff in healthcare, but um, even clients as, as conservative as a, as a hospital are asking us, okay, we need to be, you know, we need to be in social media. And um, so we're trying to kind of figure out strategically how to properly apply uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the avenues that are out there without just jumping into them blindly and, um, and doing, something, doing something that doesn't make sense. Um, so there's not one general area that we, we're trying to push into. It's just, it's just kind of feeling it out and trying to, uh, trying to go where, where it makes sense for the client. There seems to be a, a little bit of a learning curve with social media and how that's working and how it fits into advertising and, and your brand and your persona. Mm -hmm. are, are you finding that you're having to sort of educate clients at the same time that you're doing work for them? Oh, yeah. 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 Without a doubt. The, yeah. I mean, people, they're not used to this stuff. They, they're used to TV. They're used to print. And when we come out with, at them with, hey, why don't you make a Twitter feed? and talk about what you're doing right now. Or, hey, look, you've got the Twitter feed and you can update instantly. Yeah. We have some casinos, you know, what the newest show is, um, what the newest deal is. It, it, it scares them because they're not used to it. Um, well, and, and also from a standpoint of, like, uh, project management and budgeting, um, uh, clients understand television. They understand traditional media. They understand hey, a brochure costs this, um, you know, this is, uh, this is kind of the, the basic ballpark we're looking at for budget for, for traditional stuff. I mean, t they know television uh, involves a certain set of variables with costs. They know just the traditional stuff, that, that's their comfort level. When you go to a client with a website, I mean, this is, uh, this is something that we have a, uh, that we're having to educate our clients on considerably, is uh, just the idea that um, you have to put a lasso around the scope of work, um, and you have to, because a lot of times clients uh, will will continually add to the scope, and, and, and those those kind of projects just tend to creep along, and you can get eaten alive uh, from a budget standpoint uh, as an agency. So um, it's not just the utilization of, of uh, new media, it's how to actually produce it, produce it well, inject the concept into it, and, and actually um, you know, have the stuff make sense and, and work within the framework of the entire brand. I mean, it's, it's, it's more complex. I mean, it, when my father was running an agency, it was, okay, we're going to make a TV spot, we're going to do some newspaper ads, we're going to do a magazine ad, we're going to do some billboards, we're going to crank that out, and those guys are martinis. Mm -hmm. And it um, sounds awesome. Um, and advertising sounds, you know, it's like the Mad Men thing. It's, it sounds, yeah. it's, out, it's attractive and, it, and it's, it's interesting, um, but you know, advertising is a 24-hour-a-day job now, and there's a thousand ways to get in front of your consumers. So it's interesting. It's it's uh, not for the faint heart. No kidding. <laughs> um, so in in that same uh, subject, there, you know, um, agencies and companies and brands seem to be accepting that there are all these other um, streams of communication, different ways that they can talk to their consumers, um, and Something I mentioned uh, in emailing back and forth with you um, earlier this week was the new beta site for Crispin Border and Blavisky. Yeah. Um, and I don't think they've gone live with it yet. I think it's just in beta form, and they I'm not sure how many people they've shared it with, but it, it really struck a chord with me because, you know, no longer is it a flash intro and, you know, and really fun interactive kind of things or, or physical, you know, click on this sort of things. It's It's like eight different... Uh, streaming sources of content, right. you know, and it, it's a very dramatic change for the, you know, for the face of an agency. Mm -hmm. um, what, how, do you think that's an effective way for a uh, an agency to sort of communicate with their public? 
Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, the, the one thing about the Crispin site is, um, yeah, and, and I know it's in beta, and I, I've certainly I, I hopped all over it. I mean, they, they put they pumped it out on Twitter, and, and probably um, probably just the advertising uh, community is is aware of that site at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure how uh, how many general consumers are, are hitting uh, agency websites anyway. But um, it's interesting. I mean, the the the, the transparency um, is awesome, and certainly Crispin has the um, has the uh, the frequency of, um, of chatter out there to, com to populate that site continually. Uh, the, the trick is it's not always positive, and, uh, and that, that's um, something that they, they are obviously relinquishing control of. Sure, it's and a decision that they're making to sort of yeah. open that up and accept whatever happens, happens. Sure, yeah, and, and, and that's a brand has to decide that. I mean, um, if you recall or if you're familiar with what Skittles tried, I mean, they, they looked at the Modern Easter website and mm -hmm. They complete. I mean, they ripped it off. They didn't rip it off. Whatever. Uh, but they 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 opened up their. Uh oh, <laughs> I thought we lost it. No. Uh, nope. You're still here. Okay. Go to sleep. Sorry. Yeah. I'm like, oh god. I'm talking to nobody. <laughs> uh, so um, I mean, what they did was they they opened up the brand completely, and um, and then of course, kids realized that they could populate Skittles website with nasty you know Twitter comments and. Um, and then Skittles yanked that pretty quick. Um, Crispin, obviously, you know, is not a consumer brand. The risk is fairly minimal. I mean, the the whole idea of of um, there's a certain community out there that bashes Crispin. Uh, it, it, from my standpoint is that's that's jealousy. I mean, you, you like them or you hate them. They do work that gets talked about, and um, their their work is very relevant. And um, so I, I think it makes sense for them. It, it just depends. I, I like the idea of Giving, uh, taking part in a conversation, and I think that's what social media is good, you know, good about, obviously. But, but when you when you re completely relinquish your brand voice, I think that's that's a problem. I think you need to continue to manage your brand personality, and um, so to completely back away and and not, um, you know, let go of the ski rope completely. Um, I don't know. I, I'm still kind of I'm still kind of you know on the fence about that. Mm -hmm. Let me just take a moment here. We've got, had a whole bunch of people just join the group here. Um, this is design chat number 13. Um, we're a weekly uh, community uh, design discussion um, that you know used to live completely on Twitter and now we're bringing in some interesting people to talk to. This week we have uh, Red Square Agency from Mobile, Alabama. They're going to be chatting with us tonight. Um, so we're going to have a little live video discussion here for a while, and then we're going to go to um, take some questions and interact with the, uh, the chat room. Um, my name is Ryan McGovern. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Hoopajube and at Design Chat. Uh, I'm a designer out of uh, Chicago area, Illinois. Right now, we're live streaming from Samata Mason in West Dundee, Illinois. Um, so again, thanks to them. Uh, I've got Chuck Stenick from Samata Mason sitting here. He's at Chuck Stenick. He's going to be uh, posting some links that we're talking about, uh, anything that we're referencing, watch for his, uh, his post in the, uh, the chat room here. So, um, so we were just talking about the, the Christian um, Porter and Bogusky site and, and how its, its beta version has started to accept different streams, um, live streams of content that's coming in from all sorts of different sources on the Internet. Um, and your last point there was, you know, your concern would be completely relinquishing uh, control over that, and I think what they did is really interesting in that some of it, you know, is Twitter feed. Uh, some of it is, right. you know, they they want to show their commercials. They want to show what's hot right now, what they're working on, and you can choose to view that content. It's kind of like it's kind of like entering a cave, and you've got six caves to choose from, sure. you know, and it's choose your own adventure. Yeah, no, and, and I mean, it's extremely intelligent. I mean, you know, in, in the little intro video with uh, Alex and explaining uh -huh. how the site works and this. This information over here is is uh, you know the area we control, and everything else is up to you guys. I mean, it's 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 very it's it's intelligent work. Um, now, whether that's good design, I've seen some interesting comments here um, about um, you know whether it's too cluttered or from a design standpoint, how if it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I'll, I'll leave that. I, I actually have not actually seen this website yet. Um, kind of busy. Uh, <laughs> I we have yeah I'm busy. Um, yeah, I got it. I have a bookmark. Actually. We're gonna actually pull up. I'm gonna look at it, and then I can tell you. 
Yeah, I can see the busyness that people are talking about right away. Chuck, um, Chuck just linked to it, by the way. It's right there. Yeah. Okay. Beta.cpb group. And, and Rich had made a comment about the Modern East website, which I really like because it, you know, it floats on top of everything else. And then, it, you know, when they link to, hey, our commercial is the at the YouTube, our print is a Flickr feed. Mm -hmm. I really, when I was looking for jobs last year, late last year, you know, I really connected with that. I thought that was really smart and kind of a new way to look at a website. Hey, it's not, you know, it's not something you own. It's something that kind of lives inside the Internet. And that's kind of what we're getting to these days. It's, it's not sort of like little parcels of land. It's sort of a community. It's getting more community. And it's kind of all interconnecting itself together um, and becoming sort of, I don't know, the hive mind, as some people call it on the Twitter that I've heard. Uh, I don't know. I still like I still like pretty websites, and um, I, I I think that um, you know our site we we built it and um, we wanted it to be uh, we wanted to share the space because the the, the website uh, the the office space we're in is is interesting for. for um, uh, the feed from oh go ahead and uh, did, did y'all leave me? There? No, you're still there. Okay. You're cool. still there. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, I, you know, it's just, I, it's the web. My, I change. I change my mind on the web like every day, um, and I, I don't think I'm the only one. You know. <laughs> no, definitely not. You know, it seems like these these interactions need to um, stay fluid, and and they should be able to change. Uh, you know, as, as your uh, your agency and your brand is sort of a fluid thing. It's it's like a living, breathing organism, and it needs to be able to stop on a dime if something happens, so yeah. you guys can react to it. Which yeah. brings up, up uh, an interesting point that I've been talking to people about recently uh, about flash sites and how hard they are to edit sometimes, um, and, and and how some people are saying that uh, a flash microsite um, that idea is dying. You know. And, you know, it's going to slowly fade out and, and and not exist anymore because of the, how hard they are to edit and, and and how many of them abuse the flashiness of it, um, you know, and just, you know, pops and bangs for the sake of pops and bangs. Well, yeah, I mean, when we when we built our site, we wanted the animation to be subtle. We wanted sophistication. And, um, I mean, you can definitely ever do it. I mean, I think with any kind of technique, and, and Andy can certainly speak to this, Technique for technique's sake is just a lot of times garbage. Um, you know. Yeah. The, you know, remember the old, the good old days of the uh, the flash intro site. You know, yeah. you'd always have the flash intro site. Yeah. And it would be this like crazy, like, hey, look what we can do with motion graphics, and it's you know all these swirly, and then it pops to, you know, an old, I don't know, probably tables. They probably use tables or something. It was just a waste of time. I don't know why you spent the money on, and the time on doing it when you could just do a simple, hey, we're this, look at us. You know, an interesting, you know, just you land on the website, mm -hmm. and it's got, it, it's well, it's beautiful, it's well designed, it's simple. I think clutter in the Internet is not what you're going for. And the Internet's cluttered enough the way it is. You go to any sort of, like, major website, and you've got, you know, let's say NewYorkTimes.com, you've got the, the, the ads going on, you've got like four or five different stories above the fold, which sort of works for them, but if you're going to any other sort of design or, I don't know, a, a company website, it shouldn't, you should never overwhelm people. I think there is a threshold for information in the human mind, and a lot of people like to push that threshold, and they really shouldn't. And because the internet is so, I don't know, to clients, I think they think it's easier. Uh, they're like, oh yeah, you can easily change that. Oh yeah, you can easily stuff that full of stuff. That um, they will just take a website and just shoehorn as much stuff into it as they as they possibly can without like making their eyes bleed. And mm -hmm. you just can't do that. We seem to be dealing with a lot of visual overload and data overload and, and, and that sort of thing. And I think, I think that's really um, affecting the design community right now. 
And uh, especially, I, I think right now is a very difficult time um, to become a, a designer. I think uh, young designers coming out of school um, are going to be torn in a lot of directions. How much programming should they learn? You know, I mean, because a lot of the things we do in order to get it accomplished, either you need to pay, you know, a full-time developer, uh, which can get really expensive and freelancers just aren't willing to do, or they have to take on the programming uh, themselves and handle all the design and theory and be, uh, reasoning behind a project, you know, not to mention, you know, marketing messages and that sort of thing. Um, so do you, do you guys have any programs for designers coming in? Do you, do you work with any universities or anything like that? Well, we, we right now are in the middle of um, completely retooling our intern program. Um, we're actually putting up, we're packaging the, the entire thing. Um, we're actually calling the program Red Shirts, kind of a, a double play on the name. And, and mm -hmm. uh, um, Or the Star Trek reference, they're the first to die. <laughs> nice. means nothing to me. I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I went to the University of Alabama. I, I know football. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, so we're in the middle of kind of uh, uh, ramping that up. I mean, we've, we've got, I don't know how many interns here, eight or ten, something like that. Um, there's not, you know, in the, the southeast uh, and in this particular community, um, there's not any great design programs down here, honestly. Um, we're pulling, you know, we we got Creative Circus. Um, it's really Atlanta. Atlanta. It's, creative, it's Creative Circus. I mean, if you think about Atlanta per capita, it's probably the highest amount of design schools per capita or programs because there's the Creative Circus, there's Portfolio Center, um, SCAD has a uh, branch there, I think State, Georgia State has a program, there's like two, there's a, an art institute in Atlanta and there's like two or three smaller colleges that also have design programs. Get down to it, you know, I, I, I have connections obviously with the circus and you know I deal with that sort of stuff, that's sort of my uh, design community connections with schools. I still sort of mentor a little bit. I, you know, I get sent stuff through the circus and I, you know, re reply and say, hey, you know, this is good, this is bad. The circus, they're, they're starting to change actually. I think the fall quarter they're going to start adding more programming. But when I was there, we were told, hey, you really don't need to know Flash. You can go learn Flash if you really want to, but there's people for that. You know, you don't need to really learn how to program a website hardcore. There's people for that. So I was taught to just sort of know how the know know the landscape, know how the programs worked, know the limitations. But hey, if you don't really know how to do it yourself, you know, you know, storyboard it or whatever, and get somebody else to do it. I mean, what I what I found is that um, the past five or six years, um, you've seen two very distinct silos. You've seen technicians who know how to build stuff on the web and designers um, in a separate silo. And, you know, never the twain shall meet, kind of. And um, and I think that now that, uh, these these schools are starting to, um, they're starting to see that um, it's a good idea to integrate those capabilities. Um, we've worked with some great, we've worked with some really great uh, partners. Um, you know, our, our capabilities uh, from a programming standpoint, are they're decent, uh, but a lot of times we're building we're building very very complex sites, and we have to partner with people like Struck uh, out in um, Salt Lake City, or pe guys up in Atlanta uh, that we work with a lot. Um, people in uh, we've started talking to people all over the country, and, and really we've met a lot of them through Twitter, which is really cool. But mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's a lot of times you, you'll just find that that those capabilities are are, are very different, um, and, and that are uh, that are separate. You know, some people know how to build very different, um, and, and that are uh, that are separate. You know, some people know how to build build stuff. They're 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 literally technicians, and then you've got designers. If you can do, if you can find somebody who can do both, it's it's uh, it's nice. Mm -hmm. um, last sort of story or mention about social media for the night, and then we'll stick. Uh, strictly to design, I swear. Um, there was a story that came out this week um, that uh, Best Buy published a job, uh, and the reading was that uh, it was a senior manager emerging media marketing at Best Buy, and it required the applicant to have a Twitter account, and uh, it must be they must have 250 followers or more. What do you guys think about that, and, and how hard is it to get 250 followers on Twitter? 
Um, okay, let me just give you a quick example. I think that's uh, idiotic, um, frankly. Um, and I know that, that this is this is a family-friendly show, so I'm just going to keep keep the keep the uh, the derogatory comments to a minimum. Uh, Thank I, you I, very much. I, I I think it's it's not very smart. And um, how hard is it to get 250 followers on uh, Twitter? I'm hearing myself. That yeah, we're okay. we're having some issues. Um, Looking at the feed. Ah, okay. Our feed you guys is, sound okay, so uh, okay. just keep on rolling with it. Yeah, no. well, I'm saying the, the, the chat feed, we've, we've stopped about uh, 10 minutes ago. We've not gotten anything new. Well, okay. Man, that's right. um, okay, so I don't know. I just don't think it's very intelligent. And how hard is it to get 250 followers? Uh, we created a fake, um, and I'll see if I can write this in the, uh, in the space here. We created a fake... Um, personality, a pseudo personality for our traffic director. Um, his name is Jarrett McGraw and we created this fake uh, character called JRET and um, we built a website and I just popped it out there. I don't know yeah. if we're, we're not, not, yeah, our feed is we're not seeing the feed. I don't know if you see the URL I just put up there. I hear it popping but I don't see it moving either. Um, yeah, um, the users just, might be able to see it because they can refresh. I gotcha. Well, if you go to Twitter, um, it, the, the Twitter account is the real underscore JRET, um, and we basically created this fake, uh, this fake personality, and we we just started following people, and he's got I don't know close to a thousand followers in a couple wow. of weeks. I mean, it's not hard at all. Um, so to have that be a job requirement, I mean, I understand. Hey, you know, must speak the language, must actually use the tools. Um, that makes sense, and I know that. Um, I, I read something somewhere, I think RGA posted something the other day that uh, either the New York Times or I'm going to misspeak, some big publication whose who's head of uh, social media hadn't posted a tweet in two months. Um, so it makes sense to utilize the tools if you're going to be, uh, if you're gonna be working in that position, but to, to throw some arbitrary number out there, you have to have 250 followers, I think it's silly. And well, that thing you 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 posted, I think, over the weekend, uh, thing about the stats of Twitter and the stats of Twitter, it's you know seventy five percent of the people, you know, was it five? Uh, yeah, something like one percent does seventy five percent of the talking. Right. Yeah. There's you know Twitter. There's you know there's not that many people talking every day, and the majority of people say nothing. It's like. It was it was a charts and graphs thing, but basically it, it showed that like nobody's there's a very small amount of people, and the more tweet, and the, but the more users uh, followers you have, the more you tweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is kind of an interesting thing. But I think I would think that those people are more of like the Austin Kutcher, Oprah people who have like a million followers right. or whatever, and of course they're going to be faithful to every day because they've got a broadcast audience. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, All right, we're, let's, we're, you know. let's switch it up a little bit. Let's uh, let's get back to talking about you guys and uh, your agency and your work because I'm really excited. I've got a PDF here um, behind me of some of your stuff, uh, cool. and I'd like to kind of you know pop through it and and have you guys explain the sort of situation and how you guys came to uh, uh, solve the problems that you did. Um, okay. I was checking out your website and uh, like we were talking about before. Um, one of your case studies that, that really struck a chord with me was uh, Fusaklis. Am I pronouncing that correctly? That's right. Mm -hmm. Fusaklis, yeah. Fusaklis. Okay, so why don't you start telling us a story about um, how your work with them started and, and uh, what it resulted in. Uh, yeah, well, th that's, a good, that's a good example. Um, the re uh, Jay Rett's on there, awesome. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the Fusaklis work was, um, was, that's a good example of a client that I started working with uh, four or five years ago when we first started trying to do really uh, interesting work that was getting talked about. And um, Fusaklis is a small chicken finger chain. They're headquartered in Mobile. Very cool name. The guy's name is Will Fusiati. Um, I think Fusakli was his nickname. Um, but really cool guy. Went to LSU, so uh, you know I, I forgave him for that. But uh, anyway, he uh, he's got great product. It's very, it's, it's really really well done. It's really good. It's good stuff. I yeah. mean, it's, it should be illegal, but it's it's, it's awesome. So it's, it's fried chicken and, and, and that's it. it yeah, there's fried like, chicken fingers. Yeah. Basically. So um, anyway, the um, we've done really, really 
uh, crazy work. He doesn't have a huge budget at all. I mean, it's very, very, it's minuscule actually. And um, so what we've done is taken a very small amount of paid media and we've blown, we've, we've tried to do campaigns that get a lot of attention. So the, the board you see right there uh, behind Ryan is um, something we did in Mobile. Uh, and it's kind of, a, it's a political story. And, and one, of the, one of the things that we believe, um, it, one of our house rules is, is do what gets talked about. And um, with, with Boussackley having a very small budget, we had to take, uh, you know, take whatever opportunity we could to inject the brand in a larger conversation to kind of capitalize on, a, on, a, you know, on that buzz. So Boeing and Northrop Grumman, this is kind of a mobile local thing. Um, and, and I know that uh, Boeing uh, in Chicago uh, uh, are, are kind of tight there, Ryan, so I hope I'm not hurting your feelings. Um, <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, anyway, so uh, Boeing and Northrop Grumman were in this uh, fight over a, a tanker contract, and Northrop Grumman was awarded uh, this big, this big uh, Air Force tanker contract. So they were going to build this. Uh, I can't talk. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I got rid of it. Okay. Um, anyway, so they um, they awarded Northrop the uh, contract. They were going to headquarter in Mobile. It was going to be this huge thing, bring tons of jobs to the area. It was going to make Mobile uh, second to Seattle as far as aerospace. Um, Boeing complained, said the bid process wasn't fair, da 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 da. It got all blown out of proportion, and uh, the government pulled the contract and put it up in limbo, so effectively taking all these jobs out of Mobile. So uh, we put a board up um, right there, very simple message. We'd like to offer Boeing a finger. And, um, Chicken kind of, finger. Of course. Yes, exactly. Of course. Yeah. I mean, we meant nothing else. And, of course, um, yeah. And I don't know why the public, public went insane. But um, literally, we had zero money. Um, it was it was on a marquee in front of the restaurant, and um, and I called Will and said we have to get this on an outdoor board. Uh, we put it on a digital board, got it up that day. We spent like nine hundred bucks. Um, we got about close to two million dollars worth of uh, exposure over it, um, and and his sales for that you know for the month or two that we were getting that buzz were tremendous. So. You know, just an example of taking a very small, uh, a very small budget and turning it into something huge. You know, making advertising that is newsworthy, and the design is just super clean. I mean, there's not much to it. It's just uh, very clean, uh, very clean type on white background. I mean, it, you don't need anything else. It says it says everything it needs to say. Right. The design seemed to go really into the messaging and the yeah. story and the timing uh, of which you guys carried that out. Um, and it was just really cool to see, you know, how little money you guys uh, spent and such a huge impact that you made for that business and for your local community there. It was really amazing. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it wound up in the Seattle Times. It wound up um, being written about all over the country. Uh, it was on CNBC and some other stuff like that. So it got a lot of attention, and mm -hmm. um, it was fun. Yeah, we like to push buttons. Mm -hmm. um, Let's, uh, let's move on to another project here. Um, do you guys have one specifically that you'd like to talk about? I know you were talk, t uh, telling me about a, um, a TV spot earlier. I'm not sure if I have that one with me or not. Yeah, we, it got nixed. We can't, we can't show it. It's still, it's okay. still on ice. We, we, we just produced something. Uh, it's another, another Chicago area uh, client. It's for Van Campen Investments, and uh, we just produced some television that we're really excited about. We, we shot it in L.A. last week, and it's... Mm -hmm. it's it's insane. Um, it's 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 the coolest TV we've done in a while, um, and I was hoping to preview it, but uh, got the got the, the thumbs down. <laughs> what was the um, one you've been twittering about? Um, some stop animation stuff that you guys are, have been doing. What's that? That's about? Some other cool stuff we've been doing. Uh, that's actually for a bank. And yeah, it's yeah, really fun. And and we did uh, just present that to the client today. Uh, that also is still under wraps. I wish I could share it, but the stuff you've got behind you right there, that animation is the same. It's the same company. Um, that we worked with, um, that stuff you've got behind you now is for Alabama Credit Union, and um, it is, um, it's very different for uh, the, fin we've done a lot of really interesting financial stuff. And we worked with Shiny Object in Austin, Texas uh, on these projects. Mm -hmm. Playing the spot? Yep. Yeah, just really interesting animation, um, kind of a, uh, you know, uh, A very Salvador Dali kind of uh, surrealist, movie, which is which is different. Um, but uh, I don't know if any of you guys know about Shiny Object. Um, if you go to Shiny TV, um, they're a tremendous uh, animation group down in uh, a good bit. And um, you know, 
looking at the financial category, there's just not a whole lot of interesting stuff being done, um, let alone, you know, stop animation um, uh, or the kind of stuff that you've got behind you right there. It's, it's you know, it's just different. The, I'm, I'm, laugh, I'm laughing because I've, I've seen the spots and they're pretty hilarious and uh, you've, yeah. you've never seen dinosaurs. Ba ba I can give you all, I can give you all the synopsis. We basically um, we're, we're drawing a metaphor between big banks and dinosaurs, um, and the idea that the dinosaurs didn't end up uh, making it. And um, it's it's kind of a it's a not so subtle uh, jab at the big banks. And um, so each spot has these two plastic toy dinosaurs talking to one another, and um, they they don't end well. Uh, they die in every spot. <laughs> yes. And when can we see that? When is it going to be released? Um, it'll probably be ready in the next couple of days. Yeah. Um, we're doing some final sound design, and the client will give us the, the final stamp, and, and we'll be done with them, and we, yeah. can, we can pop them out there. Um, the screenshots are really cool, um, and I've kind of been leaking out some stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, the, I haven't revealed the client, but it, it's a bank. Yeah, it's a bank, and it's pretty, yeah, for a bank and for a small local bank, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's very interesting work. And, yeah, I, I, I had nothing to do with it, but I, I laugh every time I walk into the people who did the office and they're showing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let's jump back up to the, the top here to some of your websites at the yeah. beginning. There was, um, uh, which one is this? Yeah, Capital the, Management? Yeah, that's the Invil Capital. That's Simplicity Plan. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a website that... Um, that's actually still kind of under wraps as well, so nobody tell anybody. Um, uh, it's a, and, and I think that's just a screenshot you've got there. Mm -hmm. um, we built, uh, this is a site for a funeral, uh, the world's second largest funeral services company. So um, uh, obviously it doesn't look anything like what you'd imagine a funeral company's website would look like. Um, and that's that's on purpose. Again, it's kind of a zig, zig when everybody else zags kind of mentality. We, we consciously try to Look at what uh, the category is doing, and just and just don't do that. I mean, I know that sounds elementary, but to get a to get a client to actually act on that thought is difficult because uh, it's hard to get them to go outside of their comfort zone. And, and what the funeral industry is com comfortable with is um, very kind of muted tones. Uh, it you know it it looks like somebody died. And so we did, all, we did a lot of research. We found out that um, the advertising that this company was doing was not driving sales um, as far as at need. So we, we focused on pre-planning. And since you're pre-planning, uh, we, we treated it like, uh, we, we had this thought, what if there was a funeral services company that was dedicated to helping people live their life to the fullest? And so that's why we picked the bright color palette. That's why we focused on, um, we, we built this little mini world uh, that literally you can go into these different sections of the website and um, when you pre-plan your funeral you get added value. It's kind of like an affiliate program. You get added value. So as a member you get discounts on travel, you get discounts on health products, financial products, and so on and so forth. So it's, that site was tremendous and it was like building TurboTax from the ground up. Um, a huge database. a lot of security uh, tied into their CRM. All of that um, was very complex to build, and to make it look pretty um, was challenging. What, we was the, with what was the timeline for a project like this? How, I mean, how long was the planning stage before you, you guys actually made it to the web? Um, about uh, six or eight months, and it's still not live yet. I mean, what you're looking at right there is, is a screenshot. I mean, we've got, we've got it living on a... a on a back-end server somewhere. Um, I don't know if you popped around it, uh, Ryan, but um, mm -hmm. basically the, the globe rotates and you can literally navigate a little avatar around and enter these different sections in the website. Um, mm -hmm. So it was a huge, huge project uh, that nearly killed our interactive producer. Um, she, she made it. That, uh, Those are the best ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a great learning process. I mean, we've never built anything that complex, uh, honestly. Um, so the entire agency gain from that experience. Mm -hmm. And those are some uh, of the marks. Yeah, those are some of our marks. Uh, you have the Hard Rock stuff up. Hard Rock? Yeah, it's those posters that yes. I sent you. Uh, you know, we can talk about those. Those are actually some of the stuff yeah, that, I did. Yeah, that's, I did. that's Andy's stuff, so you can hear more about uh, more about what he did there. What were we were thinking? Um, 
Go ahead and start talking about it. I'll find it first. Okay. So Hard Rock uh, Casino in Biloxi is one of it's you know part of the Hard Rock team, um, and we actually we started working with them in about what early April, mm -hmm. late March, um, and. and what our impetus for the design was, we were looking at stuff like um, hatch, hatch show print, a lot of hatch show print, and a lot of like the, the recent gig posters. Um, if you'll, the one that's actually behind your head right now. Okay, so you're 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 in front of it right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the rock box. Actually, that one, um, that was my Southern Gothic meets sort of pirates meets. Um, you know, in uh, Pulp Fiction, where there's the, the suitcase that you never see what's in it, but it always glows, that was pretty much what that all was. And it was for this, uh, this kiosk for them. So we were kind of looking at Hatch Open and the way they do type and the way they kind of, like, texture everything. And it's very blocky. It's sort of amateurish, but really smartly done. Um, so we were, you know, I got to... Okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so that was sort of our impetus for that one. And the one next to it is the uh, London Calling, which is this concert that Hard Rock puts on in London. You know, that one we were looking at. The color scheme is obviously the Union Jack. Uh, the I think the direct mailer for it has more Union Jack than the poster does. But, you know, London. So you're going to London, and it's like this crazy sort of I think we were looking at a lot of, like, James Bond for that. Um we sit around and look at like we, we have the Hat Show Print book which um I'm not laying around. Anyway, the Hat Show Print book, which I think everybody should own, is really great and we kind of we, we call it the Bible because hey I'm doing a new project, so where's the book? And we flip through it and find something that we really like and say, Okay, how can I use this to you know, oh I really like the way they did type here and I really like the way they did the border. Um so that's what we were doing for all of this this uh hard rock stuff. And really, it doesn't look like anything else in the market. No, well, in the casino industry, and, and we we handle uh, three casinos, and they're they're great advertising clients because they're continually promoting. I mean, they and they have decent budgets. I mean, right now we're lucky to have those those clients because they're they're continually spending. Um, so from a financial standpoint, it's not bad. Um, but for the most part, casinos are kind of um, they tend to be schlocky. I mean, just quite honestly, they. Um, they're they're not they're certainly not good, known for good design. And Hard Rock is a great brand. I mean that's a that's a fantastic brand. There's a lot of heritage with that brand. Um, and so when they hired us, they they had not been working with uh, very sophisticated designers. Um, and so they just wanted something to look good. You know their stuff just didn't look good. And before you even get to a concept, we just wanted the the stuff to look great. And so one of the things. Being in the Gulf Coast, being in the South, uh, the, the, th the one thing that I kind of thought was um, was the quintessential uh, look was kind of the hat show, uh, the hat show poster, and it's kind of like um, it's it's rock and roll and it's southern and um, hard rock is rock and roll and it's in the South right here, so I mean it just makes sense. And um, I mean you know yeah, with that yeah you know, we were. Uh, another thing we kind of looked at, the opening title sequence for True Blood. I think that also works really well. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of those weird, uh, the Southern Gothic that kind of permeates down here. The, the dirty sort of, I don't really know how to describe it. It's just really interesting, and you see it a lot, a lot down here. Um, the typeface, we use this typeface called uh, Absent, uh, is it Absent Grotesque? It's a... If you've ever heard of you work for them, I know the audio, I've, I'm reading the feed, the audio is choppy, I'll put it in a minute for the website. It's a really good little sort of, they have a look and they go with it and it's really good and it's cheap, especially for students out there. It's really good, cheapish stuff to look at. Um, and we were we used their stuff, uh, but that balloon thing, I actually didn't do the balloon one, but that's another sort of raise and I think, you know, that whole like, Sunburst thing. Uh, I think there was a Willie Nelson album that has that same <laughs> that same look. Yeah, I've been looking at a lot of stuff, obviously, like Willie Nelson album covers. But with that sort of ray, ray burst that's in that, um, it's 
pretty cool. Uh, the one next to it, one that's behind your head, uh, it's just we kind of have this light bulb. You, yeah, kind of hard to see. You, yeah. All you can do is light bulb. Actually, you know what, guys? I'm going to cut you off for a second here. Um, okay. I'm being told we've got only a few more, uh, maybe five more minutes left for the conversation. Um, oh, okay. So let's open it up to, uh, to find some questions from the uh, uh, from the chat room here. And actually, Chuck, could you, if you could swing that around, my chat isn't working here. I need to see that the chat. Room, yeah, uh, right. you have a working there. Yeah, right. So have you seen any questions popping up there? Anything you guys want to address? Okay. Let me see. How, how do you break through the clutter? Um, I mean, I think to break through the clutter, you have to know what the clutter is. Um, yeah. And and so. You look at a category, and, and it's, everything's a bell curve. You know, everybody clamors to the center, and um, when you can identify what that center is, um, that uh, then you can make a conscious decision not to go there. I mean, I know that's again sounds overly simplistic, um, and, and the real trick is getting the client to do that. Um, it sounds easy, and, and, and most everybody in advertising and design can say, "Hey, let's not look like everybody else," and, and that's great. But to get in front of a client and actually sell it through. And get it produced. Uh, that's a that's that's a different caliber of uh, of, of pro, you know. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But you know, you, and you also you have to keep going back to them with with stuff that doesn't suck. Um, a lot of times agencies will fold really easy and um, and, and, and fall into kind of the order taker uh, mentality. And you just have to be able to continually go back to them with stuff that's good. And, and, and that takes a lot of extra effort. You know, you spend 20% 20, 20 of your time uh, building the work and 80% of the time defending it. Chad Schomber just asked, uh, how many headlines were written before you landed on the finger? Uh, that was one. One. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, yeah, there's Jared. Uh, the, you know, um, actually, we did not write the, the line. The client wrote the line. And uh, he put it on a marquee in front of his restaurant, and one of our art directors took a picture of it and drove into work and showed me the picture, emailed the picture around, and I was like, that's going on a billboard today. Amazing. Yeah, it was fun. That's absolutely yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah we, like, we like really, really um, kinetic energy um, uh, of certain campaigns. I mean, the idea that you, you grab an idea and you can convince a client to act on it really quickly with spont spontaneity is, is huge. And if you can do that, and, and, and then you ask yourself right before you do it, oh, my God, are we going to get away with it? Then you know you're onto something good, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. you know. All right, guys, um, I'm going to start to wrap this up. You know what? We could sit here and talk all night, and I was uh, really excited to have you guys on. Again, this was design chat number 13. Um, we're going to do this every week. Uh, this was uh, Red Square Agency, uh, Rich Sullivan and Andy Keel. So thank you guys uh, for doing this. Um, next week is going to be, um, let me bring it up here, sorry I wasn't uh, ready for that. Um, next week we have, um, oh yeah, Nick Campbell, um, on Twitter he's Nick Vegas, uh, he's from Digital Kitchen and he's a motion designer uh, and he's going to be uh, spending some time with us next week. Um, so thanks to uh, also Samana Mason for letting us live broadcast, um, that was really, really cool. Um, uh, we did experiment this week. We've done a video capture. We're going to try to have this uh, live on the web after the, the conversation. Uh, for those of the people who missed it, you want to go back and, and uh, uh, you know, look at what the chat room was talking about. Um, so let me thank you guys again. Um, it was really awesome talking to you guys, and uh, we'll see you guys on Twitter. We appreciate it, Ryan. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good night. Yeah. Thanks. He's gone. We still here? We still no, broadcasting? We're, I, well, I don't know. We're still broadcasting. He's gone.